Welcome. In this video, I will show you how to run Data Vault Builder on Snowpark Container Services. The idea is that you can deploy the Data Vault Builder together with your Snowflake database. So let's get first to some little introduction how Data Vault Builder works, what is the architecture, and how we will deploy it. So, Data Vault Builder is a tool which creates on top of Snowflake many different services. It allows you to model your data model visually. It translates that into working code. So it creates database tables, it creates views, load statements, it orchestrates them, it creates deployment scripts for you, it creates documentation, and it runs everything operational. I will not go into detail of all the functionality of the Data Vault Builder, but in short, it allows you to develop, deploy, and run your data warehouse completely automatic, just based on metadata in a very collaborative way. And why it works so well with Snowflake is that we are working here on top, we're orchestrating, creating everything, but we're pushing down all the data processing to Snowflake. So you can scale up your Snowflake database, and with that you can scale up how much data you can process. And as well, what is really, really cool is we are not storing any information in the Data Vault Builder itself. This means we are pushing down all the structures, metadata and data to the database. This means if you want to create a new sandbox, just zero copy clone your database and you're good to go. You can set up a new instance of Data Vault Builder and Snowflake with very, very less effort. So now let's look at the technical architecture. So we are already providing Docker containers to our clients. They're running it on AWS or Azure. They're running it on Kubernetes cluster, Linux servers, and connecting to Snowflake database. The change now is that now even the containers can be run within your Snowflake account. This means you get less reliable on coordinating different services. You can deploy the Data Vault Builder directly by SQL commands, which is really, really cool. And it's fully controlled within one account. The costs are calculated if one, one account, so you have full control in one department, probably in your organization that is controlling this whole setup. So let's have a look at how this works technically. So let's switch now to our Snowflake server or to our front end. And what we see here is we have created in a database, tutorial database, tutorial schema, a secret stage. And here I have uploaded the configuration file that we will use to start up our service. I have uploaded all my passwords that I want to use for the different containers. So these are the same files as you're using locally or on Kubernetes and that we will provide into starting up our containers. So let's go now over here to our worksheet. And here we see the first thing that we can do is starting up compute pool. And I have done that already because this takes a few minutes, three, four, maybe five minutes to get started. You can define how much compute power you want to he have here, and you can use that to run your containers. We will group the containers that we have here in our architecture into a so-called service. So we will create a service. It will start the four containers within there and they will talk to exactly one Snowflake database. So after doing that, we just need to grant it here to our role that we are using here and as well the permissions. And yes, I should limit that a little bit more, but just for demonstration purposes, it's right fine. And the next thing is the service that we will create. And this service is referring to the configuration file. The configuration file here tells the service there are four containers, how they talk to each other, some startup parameters and sizing within the containers. These are files that you receive from us. So it's corresponding like to the Docker Compose file you received before or the Helm charts that you can get from us. And the next thing we have here, we have external integration that we allowed it here to talk to the Snowflake database. There is as well internal way to talk from the containers to the database, then we have only one user and we need to have a different user, one for setting the security uh, administration stuff and other ones connecting through a connection pool um, with less privileges. So that's why we're using uh, indirect connection, but still within the Snowflake network. 
and we tell it how much instances we want to run. And as the data vault builder processes atomic stuff, we have always only one instance per service, but we can set up several services. This means this year could be like your development machine. You could start another service as test and one as production machine. So let's do that. And let's see how long it takes. I already started it, so let's just recreate it. And now I have sent a command to start up my containers. If I look at show services, I see now that the command to start up the service was received. And we can look at the status by calling a system function. And in here, we see that the containers were already started. And this means that now within the containers, the startup scripts, scripts are running, but the compute pool was ready. It's not pending, it just sent the command to the compute pool and the containers are starting up. So what is the next thing? We can look into the containers. The first one would be the connection pool that needs to connect to the database and start starting and it commits, uh, it already confirms it was able to do that. It did all the service tasks. Let's have a look here at the core server that then is using the connection pool. And it tells us it's up and running as well. So let's go to the API. Looks good. And the web GUI. So the whole system already started up. So if we go back to our PowerPoint presentation, I checked that the connection pool is talking to the database. The core is talking to the connection pool API to core and web GUI to API. It's not anything that you need to do regularly. It was just like if you install it and you want to know if everything is working, if your security settings are correct, this can help you to debug if there are any configuration issues. So let's go back in here. And what I want to see now are the so-called endpoints. And the endpoints are published connections into my service. And you see I have here two services which I haven't published to the internet, but there's one that I published and it will give me in a few seconds or minutes an endpoint. So it's setting up uh, SSL encryption. It's setting up a proxy server, securing all of this, and it will allow me to connect there. So we do a short fast forward here. I will tell you how long time I cut out. In fact, I don't need to cut out any time. It's already ready. So we get here a URL and the interesting stuff, if, if I open this URL, it gives me a login screen. And this is a Snowflake login screen. So I use my Snowflake user. And after I have done so, I get to a second login screen because now we are allowed to connect to the service. And here you see the usual Data Vault Builder login screen and from here on everything works as usual. So now you can log in in the Data Vault Builder, you can use all the services and in the background it will do the calls to the Snowflake database, create your objects and everything as usual. So this is how long it takes from setting up the infrastructure by starting a compute pool starting a service and getting to a working data vault builder with snow park container services on snowflake